Will electric cars really dominate? Are electric cars really the future? If you want to have a competent voice on these questions, this is the video for you. I'll give you all the key arguments and at the end, I'll tell you what I think about this. We're talking about combustion engines here, which is diesel and gasoline passenger cars and battery electric cars. We'll deal with hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in one of the next issues. What I'll be presenting here are all measurable and verifiable facts. I put the sources in the show notes. Some sections are my personal assumptions about the future. And no, I'm not paid by anyone to make this video. I'm curious already how you would answer the question and what arguments you have. Write them in the comments, please. Let's make a balance of arguments now. What is the case for the dominance of electric cars? And what's the case against it? And let's first look at the plus arguments that argue in favor of us all buying electric cars by 2030, if we buy cars. The first factor is convenience and the range. So the range of an electric car, a better one, will be close to a thousand kilometers in 2030. Although hardly anyone really needs that. The average driver would only need a charge once every three weeks. And in fact, electric cars will be charged the same way as cell phones while you sleep. Only on long distance journeys do you need a fast charger every few hours on the highway. And speaking of charging, lithium ion batteries will charge well over 300 kilometers in just 10 minutes in 2030. And the upcoming solid state batteries, whenever they emerge, will charge over 500 kilometers in five minutes or less. And even on long distance journeys, the coffee break is more than sufficient. Where are we going to charge? Everywhere. Tesla's already proven as a startup with little money that the claim that the charging infrastructure is a problem, it is not correct. It's wrong. There will be charging stations everywhere in 2030. Electric cars can be charged at billions of sockets, at all parking lots, at home and at work. And in apartment buildings, landlords will have to provide charging facilities. With such high rages, you don't even need to charge every day. And charging saves time. It usually only takes five minutes per week. Plug it in, unplug it once, twice or three times a week. You don't go charging. You almost always charge when you sleep. Reliability. Battery electric drives are extremely simple. And the famous comparison is that an electric drive has only 20 moving parts, but a combustion engine has 1500 or more. It can break down much less because there is much less. And that's why electric cars are very reliable and hardly need any repairs. On safety, without the big engine in the front, EVs have more of a crumple zone. They're safer. And the stable battery in the bottom provides maximum safety in a side impact. And when it comes to fire safety, there's a rumor that we need to defy. Battery electric vehicles burn at least five times less often than ICE vehicles. And what about emotions? Electric cars, people say, are just more fun to drive because they accelerate immediately and more powerfully. You might have seen the videos of people overwhelmed by the acceleration of an electric vehicle. And electric cars are quiet. And I believe, I assume, that by 2030, driving a fossil fuel car will be kind of uncool. That's an unobjective but weighty argument, I believe. So what about the cost? The most expensive thing in an electric car today is the battery. In 2030, batteries will last over 2 million kilometers. Already today, it will soon be 1 million miles, 1.6 million kilometers. At today's average, that corresponds to over 100 years of driving, in theory. In fact, such mileage will not be needed by individual human drivers, but by autonomous robo-taxis. And in 2030, batteries will cost a maximum of a third per kilowatt hour compared to today. The costs have fallen by an average of 15% each year and they will continue to fall. So all in all, in 2030, the purchase of an electric car will be drastically cheaper than buying a fossil fuel car. And also in operation, 
In terms of total operating cost per kilometer, electric cars will be cheaper already in the early 2020s. A Tesla Model 3 is already a whole lot cheaper per kilometer than a Toyota Camry. By 2030, internal combustion engines will no longer have a chance to compete in price. Let's look at some factors that are not really buying factors, but are important to see the entire picture. Raw materials will last for decades. The raw materials required for today's lithium-ion batteries are not really in short supply, if you really look at it neutrally. New batteries are becoming even more resource efficient. And rare earth materials are not used in batteries anyway, but in electric motors and also in combustion cars and mobile phones and laptops and vacuum cleaners. Batteries are recyclable to an extent of at least 95%. Even after a million kilometers, virtually all materials are still in the battery. There is no reason that there will not be enough recycling capacity. And any claim of over-exploitation is baseless. Lithium-ion batteries will require less critical raw materials such as cobalt. Possibly not at all. We will then only discuss child labor when it comes to batteries for mobile phones, PCs and shavers. Even with 100% electric cars, we would only need a maximum of 20% more electricity. Surprising, but true. Two fossil fuel cars need as much electricity to produce their fuel as is needed to run one electric car. And the storage of electricity for days, weeks and even months is currently being pioneered by countless innovations, such as giga batteries and gravity storage systems and many new solutions. I will make an episode about this too. And there's another factor that's important. Many countries have to import oil to a large extent, and not always from reputable suppliers. We can generate the energy for electric cars here in our countries. And this may not be a strong buying argument, but it is an important political argument. It's independence. And of course, we need to look at the environment. A big Tesla needs only one third of the energy that is needed to run a VW Golf for 100 kilometers. Battery electric drives are by far the most efficient. Two beefsteaks or 11 avocados cause more water consumption than the production of a very large battery. CO2 emissions will be minimized well before 2030 due to battery production with renewable energy, wind, solar and others. Combustion engine cars do not really have this potential. The share of electricity from renewable sources is growing strongly globally. Even today, in the rather poor electricity mix, electric cars are already more environmentally friendly. Fossil fuel cars continue to consume the finite oil and to emit pollutants. Emissions from electric cars continue to decrease, both in production and in operation. Fossil fuel cars are without much further potential there. And now, what's going to prevent people from buying electric cars on our way to 2030? It's about technology. Some people say there will be a great innovative leap for fossil fuel cars. Well, okay, which one? I don't see it. Electric drives are at the beginning of their development. And combustion engines are already at the end of their development. Some say, we have everything here that is needed to produce wonderfully running combustion cars. Equipment, the know-how, experts, so why change anything? Well, yeah, that's how Nokia thought about the iPhone. And how do you explain this to customers? The customers are already beginning to see the benefits in terms of performance, the driving pleasure and cost. And the Chinese competition will focus on simple electric drives and offer incredibly good and affordable electric cars. And some of us will buy them, which we didn't do before. In 10 years, hydrogen fuel cell propulsion will be ready. Battery electric drives are only a transitional technology, people say. Well, a majority still believes that battery electric cars are just an interim technology and that the hydrogen fuel cell car will win in 10 years. Hydrogen as an energy storage in passenger cars makes no technical, economic or ecological sense. And we have been researching about this for decades. There is a piece of my plan about this matter too. Plug-in hybrids are also combustion engines and they have much higher range. Yeah. Plug-in hybrids with two complete drives 
are a technically, economically and ecologically nonsensical alternative in 2030. With a range of 1000 kilometers, they are also unnecessary. Some would cry out, but we must protect our traditional car industry. Oh yes, we have to. Not so much protect as save it. But the customers will not care. They will not be interested in that. And if we can do something super well, fossil fuel cars, that nobody buys anymore, we will have a real problem then, even more. I simply do not believe your arguments. Anyone who believes that the arguments about the lower environmental impact of electric cars are not true will find electric cars bad. In the long term, however, it will become less and less possible to argue against the fact that a car powered by diesel and petrol is more environmentally friendly or conserves resources or does not cause political and social conflicts over oil. Those who, contrary to the technical facts, believe that batteries are toxic waste and simply ignore recycling will not like electric cars. Whenever someone does not want to believe in the facts about sufficient raw materials, without child labor, high ranges and short charging times, he or she will not like electric drives. It is then not fact-based arguments, but emotionally determined opinions. They may not be true, but they do lead to people rejecting electric cars for as long as they can. At the end, it will be the same as with our phones. There were all sorts of factual and unobjective arguments against smartphones, such as the seven-day range of a charge. And what happened? Almost everyone has a smartphone today and charges it daily. So on aggregate, it's a clear case. To sum it up, my assumption for the future is that in 2030, hardly anyone will be buying anything other than an electric car. And of course, you can disagree. But please don't just argue out of emotions, but with factual and logical arguments. That helps. Share this piece broadly with your friends and contacts so that they too can get savvy for heated discussions. And in the show notes, you will find a link to download all the arguments as a transcript and all the sources. Have a bright future.